don't know how long it rained last night, but uh, bottom of my tent and all my stuff's all splattered with uh, mud. So came down quite a bit for a while there. Last night was a bit on the rough side. I really wanted to stop about, you know, hour and a half before I ended up. And uh, for that last hour, the rain was really coming off and on, wind was blowing. Fun times. Late nights really make it harder to get going in the morning. You know what I really don't feel like doing today? Hiking. You know what I get to do all day? It rhymes with several curse words and the word hiking. See, this would also be the perfect morning for one of those Mascus brand coffee packets. Basically, it's going to be like normal instant coffee, like Via, but you know how Trader Joe's has the creamer mixed in? But instead of creamer, we're going to mix in a variety of painkillers and then color code them. So if you're having kind of just a little bit of a rough day, then you've got your coffee plus ibuprofen. If you're having a really bad day, then you've got your coffee plus Percocet. And if you're having the really, really bad day, then we'll have the coffee plus whatever the leading euthanasia drug is just on that last packet. I do have reception up here, so I just got off the phone with Tater. She's actually really excited because it's only about five weeks now until she'll be joining me full time for the summer. So she's all excited. She's been watching me have all the fun and not understanding the suffering. So she's super excited to get out here. Uh, so that'll probably be in another, you know, 500, 600 miles or so ish. We'll see. Dreams and ibuprofen. So I've got hiker friends that, you know, kick ass and they do 25, 30 mile days all the time and don't seem to have that big of an issue with it. But you nice folks are all following the world's okay as through hiker. So 25 mile days out here on the AT are usually followed by quite a bit of pain and grumbling. It's the masochist show. He hurts and he suffers, but still watch him go. Ah, oh, that, whoa. <laughs> Ah, that glorious point of the morning where I've been walking on the planar warts just long enough where they're not hurting as bad. I start to loosen up, yet I still feel relatively fresh. And then I trip as soon as I hit the record button. Some mornings I really wish I was more of a town guy because I could totally demolish a whole hell of a lot of food this morning. <laughs> oh well. And here's the requisite clip of a waterfall for taters. So one of the great reoccurring uh, adventures of any long trail is, of course, the Hiker Box Pop-Tart. Silver wrap, no idea what flavor is it, it's going to be. Is it going to be one of the, like, really good flavors, like, you know, s'more, cinnamon, or cherry? Or is it going to be one of, the, like, the so-so ones, like blueberry or strawberry? Or is it going to be one of the, like, abominations, like, fudge, tastes like fertilizer? And the winner this time would appear to be cinnamon with a pretzel shell, which is an interesting abomination. So last year I was all about the uh, noon uh, tablets for, you know, drink electrolytes. Uh, this year, though, thanks to all those Dollar Generals, I've become addicted to these things. Unfortunately, I've, I'm out and I haven't seen them at the last couple of stops. So we'll have to see if I can find them again. It's the Crystal Light Peach Iced Tea and the Lemonade. It dilutes really well into like, you know, the, the big liter and a half of water. And so I'll filter a liter and a half, put that in, and I can just chug it before I take off again. Saves me from having to carry more than the liter ever. So why don't I just stop and take a zero or a Nero when I don't feel like hiking? Because you never know, like today, this morning was really, really rough. Since I've been going, it's now two or three in the afternoon and things have been going pretty good. So, you never know. Also, I have a bad habit of when I take a zero I don't really need, then sometime in the near future, I will actually need a zero, and that stuff adds up if you're trying to do any of the long trails. Kind of got a schedule before winter. So you guys that think Florida trail didn't prepare me for any of this, you're completely wrong. You see this? That's just like the uh, stairs in the hotels I was staying on when they stuck me on like the second floor. Totally prepped. Okay, sadly, no Starbucks, no Jamba Juice, but we have yet another stone tower. Okay, way bald. Ran into a couple of folks. Still windy. And once again, I made great progress until I got to some place where I had people to talk to and then I killed like an hour. But always fun chatting with through hikers. Trail's actually been pretty nice today. A few sets of stairs aside. 
So if it sounds like I'm shivering uncontrollably, it's because I am, because I just drank about two liters of ice cold stream water. Really uh, clear water though. I also just had a uh, really cool conversation with a guy uh, walks with donor. He has had a double lung transplant and he is out here doing this. And his whole story of what happened with him uh, was uh, pretty awesome. I love uh, meeting interesting folks. Okay, I found a more private site. And don't worry, that dead log is not gonna fall if it breaks, I checked. A uh, bit windy, you can see the tent buckling a little bit, but at least I don't have to be hiking until nine o'clock tonight. I've got more in me today, I just, I really don't wanna be hiking until nine o'clock, two nights in a row, so I'm just gonna set up here. Chilly night last night, I think it got down into the mid or high 30s, but at least the wind finally died out this morning, so it's not gonna be too miserable to get going. So today is all about getting my next resupply at the knock, and I think I have to deal with the Smokies permit there and then getting on and trying to still make, you know, 15 plus miles if at all possible. The biggest delay at the knock is once again going to be charging my battery because I keep making these videos and that keeps eating my battery up more than I would normally, so that'll delay me a little bit. So I was a bit back from the trail last night, but I've been hearing the uh, shelter crowd pass by this morning including a couple of those obnoxious individuals with uh, speakers blaring as they hike. Always everybody's favorite trail people. I have about 11 mi miles till knock. Uh, I looked and I'm probably just going to do like a three or four day carry to get to Gatlinsburg. That's a bit off trail, but that'll prevent me from having to do like a five day, six day carry to get to uh, Standing Bear. So that's my, that's my plan as of now. Uh, there's somebody who contacted me online who's in that area who can get me back to trail. And that'll mean, I think that's at about mile 207. So not a bad point to, you know, get an actual hotel room, be able to do a reset, laundry, fully charge everything, etc., And eat for like a day straight. My plan will be just to do a single night there, not zero or anything. I'm not feeling near bad enough to zero. One of my great frustrations out here some days is hiker hunger. I ate a whole sleeve of Pop-Tarts and a bagel. And, you know, an hour later, I'm starving. Just can't seem to fill myself up. And it just gets exhausting cramming down, you know, bars and everything else all day. It's not like I'm getting to eat fun food that's appealing. Town days, yes, but those are kind of rare and few between out here. Well, what do you know, another tower. Time to go for a view. My knees are not the biggest fan of downhill like this. <laughs> Where's my nice uphill? Oh yeah, it's on the other side of Knock. Oh well. So here I am just grumbling about the downhill, not liking life, etc. And then I run into some people back there who totally cheered me up because apparently there's an eight mile uphill right after the Knock. That's going to be awesome with like a full pack. Ooh, maybe there's like food and beer so I can be really full and kind of tipsy and have a heavy pack and then do a giant climb before I camp for the night. Oh yeah, that's going to make for a fun afternoon. Okay, welcome to the knock. Okay, it is really hard to manage the motivation to leave someplace after six o'clock that has food and beer, but gonna do it. Hey there, buddy. Well, I must have done something right considering I've been climbing for several miles and I'm not hating life. You always feel bad for people who 
pull over at like four o'clock in the afternoon. This is like the best time of day to hike if you ask me. Trails aren't crowded. Heat of the day is done. You don't have to worry about damaging sun. <laughs> Granted, those people that pass me at like six o'clock in the morning probably think the same about me hanging out and drinking coffee until nine. Dude, cave camp. <laughs> but oh well, I don't have water. Actually, I think there's water here, but oh well, it's not dark yet. I'm not gonna wimp out and stop before I even make 15 miles on a resupply day, come on. I love this water source. There's something just satisfying about any sort of pipe spring and you can see somebody set up a leaf to channel this one. Or another for a relatively small footprint tent. If this was much bigger, I'd uh, be pushing on. Home sweet home for the night. Not my favorite campsite ever, but sunrise ain't bad. Okay, so if you believe the weather reports, uh, this is the last day of sun for like three days. Uh, looks like there are three days of rain and thunderstorms on the forecast, so we'll see what that does to my progress. I did make sure and get a hefty resupply just in case I can't make my normal miles. Uh, I'm planning to do a town stop at 207, so that's about you know, 66 miles from where I am. I'm starting to think maybe all those ex-girlfriends that insisted I was a contrary bastard may have been onto something considering every day where I'm like, you know, I need to make some miles today. Maybe I should get started earlier. I run late. I'm not hiking till like 10 o'clock. And then there's days like today where there's like, yeah, no big deal. I can start whenever. And then I'm up really, really early. You know, it's eight o'clock and I'm ready to hike. Also for the record, my uh, reaction to them insisting I was contrary was to disagree. And this is a lovely morning. I had this whole plan where I was gonna go visit the executive washroom at the uh, next shelter, AKA the privy. <laughs> but turns out my intestines weren't gonna wait that long. <laughs> but other than that, really pleasant morning. People are really way too negative when it comes to uphill. It doesn't last forever. And seriously, especially as you do this longer, your leg muscles aren't the limiter. It's how your knees feel. It's how they ache, you know. Joints are a much bigger thing. Uphill, all on muscle. Downhill, that's when you start getting joint pain. Oh yeah, how do you like them awesome views? Oh yeah, look at that. Such epic views, whoa. Well, supposedly the rain was gonna start tomorrow, but it sure is feeling like it's about to rain and my Weather Channel app just warned me. So we shall see. So it's sprinkling off and on, but not too much. I've seen a few people I've passed uh, putting rain gear on. Seems like they're just gonna sweat more than, uh, and end up wetter than if they just kept hiking. I'm doing fine on miles today, but I'm dragging. I think I didn't get enough sleep last night. It's, uh, you know, I think I was hiking until uh, almost 9, so I probably wasn't to bed till 10.30, 11 o'clock maybe. Okay, so here I am at Cable Gap. I'm going to take a couple of minutes here, but I'm going to push over this next hill. Try and get a couple more miles, get to the next water source. I want to get as close to the Smokies as I can so I can make good progress through this whole uh, section requiring shelter stays. Okay, as much as I'm really not feeling it at the moment, one more big hill to go. Okay, downhill to water, and hopefully a camp. I'm basically gonna take the first protected spot uh, after I have water to spend the night. I'm uh, a couple of miles up the hill from Fontana Dam, which is where a lot of people choose to resupply. I decided to use Knock and Gberg instead. So, I, uh, we'll keep going until mile 207, I think it is. And then I've got somebody who'll run me into town. I'm gonna do a uh, you know, hotel night and laundry charging, et cetera, et cetera. Well, looky there, if it's not my old friend, the Benton Mackay Trail. I guess this is where the other end ends up. Kind of figures. I've been walking for hours, haven't seen a single person. 
even that last shelter was completely abandoned. And then I push over the hill, get to the place I was hoping to camp to head water at like 7.30, and there were four people there. Okay, not quite the best of campsites, but you know, you don't really need to be perfectly flat. You really just want to be tilted a little bit. Uh, and I feel better about this than there was one small tent site at the last water source that I could have used, but it was right next to the water. And I just, I hate those sort of sites. They don't follow LNT, you know, that's how you get water issues. So anyway, home sweet home for the night, 21 miles today. I'm beat. <laughs> Smoky mountains tomorrow. Hopefully I'm doing a little better in the morning. I am three miles from the border of the Smokies, so starting tomorrow, no more camping solo like this. I'm going to have to hop from shelter to shelter, though it does turn out the permits do allow for camping outside of the shelters now due to COVID, so at least I won't be forced to camp in the shelters with everybody else. But we'll have to see what the crowds are like. I do find it really interesting. I mean, the crowds here have not been near what I expected. I kind of feel like I've mostly been out here alone. Uh, ran into, you know, some through hikers, but the majority of folks are just out for the weekend or small sections or this or that. And it hasn't been nearly the constant press I thought it would be. So I don't know if people are just in town and I'm walking by or what the deal is.